Hello everyone and welcome to Slant 3D. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to design a part to be mass producible. And it's going to be in regard to auto ejection from the machine. So at Slant 3D we have multiple different ways of getting a part off of a machine. If it's a very large piece then it will generally be a manual removal either from a robot or from a technician going by. Um, but our machines have actually been designed to allow them to remove parts from their beds themselves. Uh, we've designed different types of beds and bed materials that work with different parts, but ultimately auto ejection works best if the part itself is actually well designed for ejection. Now, if you're looking at a, a standard size part, if we're looking at the cylinder, once it's sliced and you go ahead and look at the first layer, most parts have a very large flat initial layer. This is fine and it looks great, but it also means that the part will not be able to uh, be removed from the bed if that's a very large area because it's basically a surface that is then glued to the bed right so in order to facilitate auto ejection you want to reduce this surface area here and there's a couple of ways to do that the simplest way that many people would default to um, but generally doesn't work very well is something like this just apply a chamfer to the bottom side of the part that way when this piece get rotated over there when this piece is sitting on the bed it has a very small contact area and there's a few ways of kind of finagling this but ultimately this isn't very good for the design of the part uh, you have these chamfers which can result in too steep of overhangs that can cause warping and distortion right here um, and ultimately a part just might not be allowed to have this type of outer appearance so you don't really want to do a chamfer however there's a couple of other ways of achieving this the first step would be to create a slight inset on the bottom. And this is something about like this. In this case, you would create this pocket uh, as large and as much of the inner surface area as you can. And then you would cut it in basically the distance of a single layer height. So that is one single layer, which is unnoticeable uh, inside of the design of the part itself because it still looks like a cylinder. But if we go ahead and export this, then once you pull it here into the slicer, you will see that this body is now, let's go ahead and remove the original one and slice this and we'll look at this and you will see that now that first layer is just a single ring. So we went from a giant, solid, large face adhered to the build plate to just a single ring. This is something much easier to break off. So it's not as dependent on the materials and the, the features of the machine to be knocked off. And it's just more reliable. We can use all types of different materials to allow parts to break free. But if you're producing tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of parts like we do, you want as much reliability in the design and in the process as you can. And this creates much more reliability because it will remove more easily than the single large flat surface. But this again would result in kind of an underside that's like a, an unleveled bed. You'd have a smooth outer ring that was well pressed against the bed and then you'd have this one layer up which would be very distinct layer lines. So it's really not the greatest way to do it, but it works well if you need to have that under sur underside flat surface. But what's an even better option is if you take this up all the way, oh, went the wrong direction, negative 40, like this, and then you went ahead and applied a chamfer or a fillet inside of here. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and go with a fillet because this will illustrate something a little bit better you can see that we'll now have what's essentially a dome inside of there. Uh, I'm gonna take it down to 10 so it's even clearer. But now we have this dome inside and I'm gonna pull that down a little bit more. Let's go negative 20. There we go. That's much more subtle. So now you have this dome. So you don't have any overhangs that need to be supported inside of here. Again, the exterior of the part is the same, but we've created this pocket that reduces this overall surface contact area, but when a customer is looking at the part, this pocket doesn't look bad and does not look unintentional. So it, it's a really good way, again, of reducing the surface contact area with the build plate so that this part can be easily removed. It looks very good, and it doesn't 
add any additional print time. It doesn't create some sort of feature that looks a little bit off on the part. But when you move it into here, we'll go ahead and take the body three and drag it right in here. Let's arrange these and we'll prepare to print this. And now you have two identical cylinders from the exterior. But as you go down, you have the one with the dome slowly build up. I have support turned on. We don't need that. Let's get rid of that right now just to make sure that we're clear. Going down, you have a dome that can be easily bridged without needing any sort of support. It grows down. You have this really nice low amount of surface contact area and you don't end up with this flat ring right here that is on the just the small indentation that's one layer deep and then a layer that would be really distinct lines right there as this rasterine moves across. Instead, it grows up and you have a cavity that very smoothly, very cleanly merges into the part. But ultimately, you end up with a standard cylinder that no one can tell and, and can't tell the difference from any other one. And since it has a very low contact area with the bed, it is able to be very reliably removed and now this part can be very reliably mass produced because there's no danger of it ever sticking on a machine and causing the machine to have to pause for manual removal of that part. So just a quick design tip for you as far as facilitating ejection when designing parts for mass production 3D printing. I'll leave a comment down below if there's any other topics that you'd like us to address and we'll try to cover some more of these in the videos. Like and subscribe and we'll see you again in a little bit. Have a great day, everybody.